There is another model, the Izikevich simple neuron, that is still very, very simple. All right. It is still very simple. It has two variables, v and u, where u is a recovery variable. Recovery variable has a technical definition. I don't know if u actually fits it, but we'll see. u is a recovery, recovery variable, um, and it allows the simple Izikiewicz model to produce way more realistic behavior, okay? While still being simple enough that you can simulate a bajillion of them at scale, all right? And it looks like this. Yes, these are sort of arbitrary constants. I think these basically came from curve fitting. So you looked at traces of real neurons. You fit these constants to them. Um, we see that, so it's still defined in terms of the change in voltage in time, right? dV dt is mathematician speak for how that variable v gets updated with every time step, right? And this is still in, in I guess... In the terms of these things, a fairly simple rule, right? It is a polynomial of degree 2, right? It's just a polynomial where the highest power in it is 2. And it has this additional minus u term, where u is a recovery variable, and this additional plus i still, where i is any current we care to inject, right? And then we have this du dt, which has all of these arbitrary constants in it, right? So u is another variable. This is how u evolves in time as we step, right? u evolves as we step through time. And we notice that u also depends on v. So the change in v at any given time step depends on u, and the change in u at any given time step depends on v, right? And we, know, we notice that it is minus u, right? So as v goes up, it is pulled back down by u, okay? As u goes up, it is pulled up by v and pulled down by itself, all right? So how we think about that is a little bit complicated. So as v starts to go up, it pulls up u, right? So as v starts to go up, it's pulled down by u. If u starts out low, not much will happen, right? But as v keeps going up, u will slowly start to go up, right? As u goes up, v will start to be pulled down more effectively. Once v gets pulled down, this term will go to zero, and then u will get pulled down, right? And once u gets pulled down, it will not inhibit v very much. So again, v, u is kind of a recovery variable. It exists to pull v back down towards zero, all right? And we still have that sort of arbitrary, if you pass 30 millivolts, uh, that's a number from the paper, that I, from the Isakiewicz paper, right? that's why I use that. If you pass 30 millivolts, we declare that a spike has happened, we reset V to the reset potential, right? And then we, uh, we increase U by a bit. So during that very narrow spike, if we wanted to model it, as V shoots up, it would haul U up a lot, right? So that's why we're incrementing u by this little bitty amount. Because we're not going to model that spike, but if we want the dynamics to work out right, we still have to increment u as though that happened. Here is our simulation. So if you look on the on the Isakiewicz paper that is linked before, um, he, this, I consider this quite neat, I'm sorry. If you look on the Isakiewicz paper that he's got linked before, um, He's got a bunch of little traces of neurons, right? So like the chattering neuron, he's got like the, the, the basic integrate and fire, or like, he's, yeah, not basic integrate and fire. He's got like a basic neuron. And then he's got little graphs of which constants go to which. So these, the values for A, B, C, and D come from those graphs, basically. It depends on the kind of neuron you want to be simulating, right? And one of the complexities of the real biological brain is that there are many, many different kinds of neurons that demonstrate many different kinds of behaviors, right? So I haven't talked about where do constants like V0 or V thresh, where do those come from? Um, they come from a lot of potentially different places, right? Um, you can sort of pick them based on the kind of simulation you want to do. You can pick them based on the comp based. You can pick them based on a family of neuron you want to act like. 
if we're doing machine learning like we are, you can pick sort of reasonable middle of the road values, like plus 20 for threshold, minus 60 for reset, and just call it good enough, right? Trust that your network can figure out how to learn what it needs to learn with those values. All right. And I picked some, I forget what he called it, but from like the basic sort of semi-generic pyramid neuron from his paper. That's not a pyramid neuron, what did he call it? There we go. This one, there we go. Regular spiking, good. All right, so I picked the regular spiking numbers And we see that, like, the main thing that has changed, sorry, so I picked the numbers for regular spiking for A, B, C, and D. I wrote out my update rule, right? Here is that big, long equation. And again, we can see that I kind of just translated it in pretty directly. There's U, the recovery variable. There is our A and our B, right, that show up in, yeah, I'm sorry, that show up in the update rule for U. So we have an update rule for v, yeah, for v and an update rule for U. Once again, I'm going to be turning voltage on, a driving current on, in between 20 and 45 seconds, which I represent by suddenly adding this extra term where that I would be at the end, right? I apply my update, or I apply my sort of changes multiplied by the time step, and then I detect my spikes. And again, since we don't have other neurons to talk about, when I detect a spike, all I do is mark down the time for it, okay? And then I've got my resets, right? Where my voltage gets reset to C, and my recovery variable gets updated by D. And then for completeness sake, I have the bit that makes the picture, and it looks like that, right? And again, we can already see it's slowing down, right? U, basically, is not going all the way to a resting value between spikes. I'm applying a lot of current, right? So early on, so I'm, I'm applying with 50, I'm applying a very unrealistic amount of current. So early on, as we can see, it decays down, and then it goes nuts. It starts to spike very quickly. But while it's doing this, it's building up U, that recovery variable, right? And that is making it take longer and longer to spike, so we can see that it slows down, right? And the last time, it sort of takes a real long time to overcome U. It kind of dips a little bit, right? And so that recovery variable is helping us mimic a lot of behaviors that we couldn't do without it, right? If you wanted to try to capture this sort of depletion or exhaustion behavior with a leaky integrate and fire neuron, it would be hard to do. Armed with that extra U term, we can sort of build up that inhibitory recovery factor over time, right? And so, um, again, it's sort of an interesting thing about the model. I cut off the current at this time. Oh, right, that's what, I, okay, sorry. I cut off the current, and it shoots down to way below the resting potential. Remember the resting potential was like 60? Why did it shoot down to much lower than 60? Because that U value is still high. Right? So that U value is hauling it down, and we don't have a driving current, so voltage V isn't going up. So it takes a while, right? So that if we graph that U, we might kind of see it do this, right? Or maybe even this, right? It takes a while for that U to decay, and the voltage can't stop climbing back up to the resting potential until that U has gone back to something like zero, right? whatever its equilibrium value is. So take home of all of that, though, is that the Isakiewicz simple neuron is simple, right, for a sort of math, sorry, for a certain definition of simple, right? It's simple enough that it only has two terms, that we can still use our lazy Euler integration, and that we um, can still simulate a lot of them, right? We can still simulate lots on conventional hardware, right? But because it has that U variable, it can capture much more realistic behavior, right? And if the question you're asking is, should I do leaky integrate and fire or is it Kavich? Um, it sort of kind of depends. Basically, do you think a lot of these extra behaviors matter, right? 
Do you think that for what you are doing, this exhaustion behavior, for example, would be important to capture? For a lot of sort of basic ML, probably not, right? You could probably get away with the leaky integrate and fire. And again, a lot of people have. A lot of people have done real ML with the integrate and fire, and a lot of people have done actual sort of population neuroscience with the leaky integrate and fire. The fact that it's real simple and easy doesn't mean that it's always a bad tool.